Howdy, it's Kyle discussing the geography of sports teams markets. And if you're someone that doesn't follow sports, this video isn't about the actual sports themselves, but rather the geographic sphere of influence that individual teams might have. And if you are someone that follows sports, you've probably heard the terms small market franchise or large market franchise. So in this video, I'll be discussing what that actually means and confirming or debunking whether or not some of these teams actually are a small or large market. First, a few definitions. A metropolitan area is a city plus its suburbs and exurbs. A consolidated metropolitan area are multiple metros that are so large they've grown into each other. So this would be like Washington, Baltimore, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Dallas, Fort Worth, and there are many other ones like that in the country. A television market are those areas plus the surrounding rural areas. So essentially when you turn your local news on, where's it coming from? And finally, a sports market is not necessarily any of those previous ones, but just a general sphere of influence that a certain team might have. And this is relevant because you don't have to be living within the metro area or the TV market to be contributing to that team. You could be way out in the sticks and you're still buying shirts and hats and jerseys and you're still paying for an expensive TV package to watch all the games. So you're still contributing financially to that team, even though you don't live in the immediate area. And the way things work nowadays, most teams get most of their money from TV. So it's ad revenue that they're making most of their money from. So you don't have to be right in the town to be sending them money. As long as you're watching the game, watching those commercials, they're making money. And attendance is still important. Of course, teams want a full stadium or a full arena, but the teams can still make money even if the games aren't selling out. I'm not going to go over every market for every team, but I want to give an example of what I'm talking about when I say sports market. New York City is the largest metro in the U.S., and it consists of the five boroughs of New York City, the rest of Long Island, the northern half of New Jersey, the counties just north of the Bronx, so Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, and Orange, as well as Fairfield County, Connecticut. So that whole area has about 21 million people, which makes it by far the largest metro in the U.S. But the New York City sports market extends well beyond that metropolitan area, so people that live in, say, Syracuse, Albany, Binghamton, and other parts of the state often root for the New York City teams, and you're not going to find too many folks in Albany rooting for the Boston teams. For baseball and basketball, the New York City sports market extends pretty much the entire state of New York, the northern half of New Jersey, as well as Connecticut. So that's close to 30 million people in that sports market. However, in hockey, there's a separate team that plays in Buffalo and one in New Jersey. So the New York City sports market doesn't extend as far in hockey as it does in baseball and basketball. And for football, there's a separate team in Buffalo as well. Now, certainly the Buffalo area is not going to be anywhere near as large as the New York City area. But you're talking about the Buffalo, Niagara Falls metro area plus the Rochester area. So the whole western part of New York has about three and a half million or so people, but also the southeastern portion of Ontario, Canada. But I'm not talking about Canada in this video, but some of those people that live on the Canadian side of the Buffalo area are going to be rooting for Buffalo sports teams. So obviously, New York City is the largest metro and sports market in the country, but I wanted to use that just as an example because there are other ones that are a little more debatable. If I were to ask baseball fans, what's the second largest baseball market? Most people would probably say Los Angeles because it is the second largest metro area in the country, but it is in fact Atlanta. The Atlanta Braves' sphere of influence is enormous. It's basically the entire southeast outside of Florida. The Atlanta metro area alone has over 6 million people, which is pretty large, but the sphere of influence includes the entire state of Georgia with about 10.5 million people, all of Alabama with about 4.5 million, all of South Carolina with over 5 million, eastern Tennessee with over 5 million, and portions of Mississippi and North Carolina. So the overall Atlanta Braves sphere of influence is about 30 million people, which is about the same as a New York City baseball sports market. And whenever talks come up about possibly expanding the teams in Major League Baseball, the number one spot they always talk about is somewhere in the Southeast. So Nashville or Charlotte would be the most logical places for expansion because the Braves area is so huge and there's plenty of room for other teams in there. But that's only true for baseball. In other sports, the Atlanta market is significantly smaller. So, for example, in football, the Atlanta Falcons' sphere of influence is nowhere near as large as the Braves. There are separate NFL teams in both Nashville and Charlotte, so fans in Tennessee or the Carolinas tend to root for the teams in those cities and not the Falcons. Alabama still tends to lean a little more towards the Atlanta Falcons, but there are still plenty of fans in Alabama that root for the Tennessee team. And pro football fans in Mississippi tend to root for the New Orleans Saints, so the sphere of influence for the Atlanta Falcons is less than half of that for the Atlanta Braves. 
Another interesting example I wanted to bring up is Green Bay, Wisconsin. And even if you're not a football fan, you've probably heard of the Green Bay Packers. They're one of the most well-known teams in football. And you may ask, how does Green Bay have a pro team? There's only about 100,000 people in the city, and there are only about a half a million people in the entire Green Bay metro area. But the sphere of influence for the Packers goes well beyond Green Bay. It pretty much extends throughout the entire state of Wisconsin, which includes the large metro area of Milwaukee, and the overall state has just under 6 million people. There are probably portions of northwestern Wisconsin where people root for the Minnesota Vikings, but there are also probably portions of the Michigan UP that root for the Packers. Now I want to discuss a few markets that in sports have traditionally been referred to as small markets, but in today's world where TV deals mean more than attendance, these places really can't be called small markets anymore. The first is Kansas City. The Kansas City metropolitan area has just over 2 million people, which is a relatively small metro for a pro sports team. However, the KC sphere of influence extends well beyond Kansas City. It includes basically all of western Missouri, which has about 3 million people, as well as the entire state of Kansas, which has about 3 million people. But it also extends into parts of Nebraska, and many folks in the Omaha area root for the Kansas City teams. So the overall Kansas City sports market is about 6 to 8 million people or so, which makes it not a very small market at all. The second is Cincinnati, which also has a metropolitan area of just over 2 million people. But just barely 45 minutes up the road is the Dayton Springfield metro area, which has over a million people itself. And then within Ohio, you have the Columbus metro area, which has over 2 million people as well, which is right in the middle of the state. It's hard to get a good gauge on this for sure, but I would say in Columbus, it's about 60-40 in favor of the Cincinnati teams over the Cleveland teams. Plus, Eastern Kentucky falls within the Cincinnati sports sphere of influence. You go down to Lexington, you're seeing Cincinnati Reds and Bengal stuff all around town. And you also have quite a few folks in the Louisville area rooting for the Cincinnati teams. So just like Kansas City, I would say this sports market has about 6 to 8 million people, which isn't small at all. And the third one in this same group is Pittsburgh, which also has a metropolitan area of just over 2 million people. But pretty much all of Western PA falls within the Pittsburgh sports sphere of influence. There's about 4 million people in the western part of the state. You also have plenty of Pittsburgh fans in the Youngstown, Ohio area. And pretty much all of West Virginia pro sports fans root for the Pittsburgh teams. All of my in-laws are in West Virginia, and they're all Steelers and Penguins fans, so you're going to see Pittsburgh sports stuff all the way down to Charleston, West Virginia. So just like Kansas City and Cincinnati, Pittsburgh's sphere of influence is about 6 to 8 million people, so all three of these have about the same metro area size, and all three have about the same sphere of influence size, and makes all three of them not small markets. And I also want to make special note of Oakland, California, which for years has been playing the Little Sisters of the Poor card when it comes to the size of their market. I don't know who you're trying to fool Oakland, but you're located within the very large San Francisco Bay Area. It's just that the Oakland A's are the less popular team within that region. It would be like saying the Chicago White Sox or the New York Jets are small market teams because they're the less popular team in a large metro area. So which sports markets are actually small? Well, I would say there are only six small sports markets in the entire country. Between NFL, NHL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and Major League Soccer, about 150 teams or so total, there are only eight teams that play in a small market. And I would use the cutoff for a small market as being 4 million people. That's kind of an arbitrary number, but there are six markets that have under 4 million and then none in the 4 million range, and all the other ones have over 5 million. So there is kind of a natural break at 4 million. And I'm going to kind of count down these six. And the sixth is Salt Lake City, Utah, which is home to both the Utah Jazz basketball team and the Real Salt Lake Major League Soccer team. The Salt Lake City metro area has about 2.5 million people, and its sphere of influence includes pretty much the entire state of Utah, which has about 3.2 million. But the reach for the Salt Lake sports teams does extend into portions of Wyoming and Idaho, but those are lightly populated areas, so the overall Salt Lake City sphere of influence is under 4 million. At number 5 is the aforementioned Buffalo area, which is home to both the football and hockey team. It's hard to get a good gauge on just how large the Buffalo sports sphere of influence is because I'm not really sure where Syracuse falls in terms of it's more New York City or more Buffalo and also how many folks in southeastern Ontario are rooting for the Buffalo sports teams, but no matter how you slice it, the Buffalo sports market is under 4 million people. The fourth smallest market is one you might be surprised by, and that's San Diego. The city of San Diego is the eighth largest in the U.S., San Diego County is the fifth largest in the U.S., and the San Diego metropolitan area is the 20th largest in the U.S. with about 3.4 million people. 
They only have one team, the San Diego Padres baseball team, but the sphere of influence doesn't extend past San Diego at all. There are probably a handful of Padres fans in Orange County and probably a few baseball fans in Tijuana as well, but overall the San Diego metropolitan area is pretty much the entire sports market, which is about 3.4 million. The third smallest is Las Vegas, which is home to the Golden Knights hockey team and the Raiders football team, and yeah, there's a hockey team in Las Vegas. And even if you count the entire state of Nevada as part of the Vegas sphere of influence, there's only 3.1 million people. But because both of these Las Vegas teams are new, a lot of the fans in the Reno Lake Tahoe area are actually rooting for Northern California sports teams. So it's actually probably under 3 million people for the Las Vegas sphere of influence. But either way, it's a pretty small market. The second smallest sports market in the U.S. is the Sacramento Kings for basketball. Even though the Sacramento metropolitan area has about 2.5 million people, its sphere of influence doesn't really extend much farther than that. There are some Kings fans in Stockton and Redding and other parts of the far north of California, as well as the Reno Lake Tahoe area, but overall this sports market is about 3 million people. And the smallest sports market in the country belongs to the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL. The Jacksonville metropolitan area has about 1.5 million people, but they don't really have a large following outside of that northeastern portion of Florida. There are separate teams in both Tampa and Miami. Those tend to get the majority of pro football fans in Florida. There are some Jaguars fans in the Florida Panhandle and a few in the Orlando area as well, but overall the Jaguars' sphere of influence is barely 2.5 million people, making it the smallest in the country. So that's my analysis of sports markets in the U.S., and I think it's pretty interesting because it's just another layer, another way of looking at an area or a region, and oftentimes the sports market aren't conforming to a metro area or a TV market, and oftentimes it's a source of pride for people in that region, and oftentimes it conforms with state boundaries. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about nerdy stuff about US geography or travel or cross country road tripping. And I can turn any subject like sports and make it into a geography discussion. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.